Hello everybody and welcome to Driving for Light Survival. The Ultra tempted mankind with unimaginable wealth and formed alliances to forever destroy the monumental light. The light accepted mankind's decision for a greater plan. A battle echoed across the world and the monumental light was scattered. Light was over and an era of darkness began. Wanderers moved out to strive for the fragments, but most got corrupted, offering the fragments to the fallen Neodra. The light will recombine, giving mankind an ultimatum. On which side of the line will we stand in the final battle? Overall, like, it, the story is pretty cool, like, it's not really necessary to, um, to play the game, but it's nice that it's there. So I did receive a copy of this game, uh, from the developers for free through Keymailer, um, I actually got it a lot, uh, several weeks ago, but, uh, with NextFest I was busy, um, so I got to round to playing this yesterday, played it for about two hours, um, there's a total of 96 Steam achievements that you can get. There's local co-op, or local, you know, and it's local co-op, but you can play with another person if you'd like. There is also a leaderboard, which is pretty cool. Um, I, I definitely like the leaderboard. But not a lot of people have been playing uh, Chaos Mode, from what I can see, but, I mean, we got at least 300 people with some pretty decent scores. Um, I, myself, have played quite a bit uh, in Chaos Mode. is my favorite mode. I think it's probably the best um mode that the game has to offer and as you can see despite what you might see in this video i am actually relatively good like i mean i have first place chaos mode at the beach first place at the basement 33 for the descent so i'm not terrible um so at least i'm i'm i'm, I'm decent one of the things you could do if you wanted to, you could link your Twitch or your YouTube account if you have it, uh, which is useful because then you could come up here and there's people playing and we could go and watch them if we wanted to. I think that's a pretty neat concept. It's not necessarily something that is going to be really that vital for a lot of people, I think, but overall, like, I think it's a pretty cool idea. So these skills are basically attached to your skill tree, and as you play, um, you're able to you know unlock some other ones, which it'll tell you here. Like you know, this is how you unlock it, the different things. So I could go if I was just going to play like a normal game. What I could do is I could come in here, I could select my character, select my weapon, select my ranged weapon, and then I could go down here and choose which skills that I wanted to, to play as, but I personally find that Chaos Mode is the best. Chaos Mode is going to give you a random character, a um, random weapon, and random skills. The nice thing is the random skills that are chosen are, they don't have to be unlocked, you can just jump into it. Um, every 15 waves that you survive, you unlock a new level. Uh, until you get to, you know, here where you get to do all the, the waves and everything. Which, I kind of wish they would have just kept it 15 waves for every single level, because the problem is, nothing carries over outside of those random skills. And if you're playing Chaos Mode, it, it just simply doesn't really matter. Um, but outside of that, it is a very traditional, you know, horde survival, bullet heaven, mobile tower defense simulator where you're the tower it's, it's exactly what it is uh, you come through the level you kill as many enemies as possible and you want to try to get as many of those little glowy things as possible because whatever you don't get um, will potentially lead to enemies spawning as elites which is not necessarily a bad thing because the elites do give you um these little kind of 
usable items that will be beneficial. And also, you know, they give you, um, you know, some experience that's a little bit higher than the standard experience. So these little glowy things also are what level you up. But yeah, because I didn't get all the light fragments. I'll get an enemy elite. The skill tree uh, that you get, I like it for the most part. Um, it just has its like problems in which you don't really necessarily know uh, what you're going to get at times because it's just not really clear until you start unlocking things. One of the things you could do is if you have a tree that isn't really, or a branching path that, you know, does something that you don't want, you can always kind of turn it off through, you know, this aspect of just right clicking on it, which isn't necessarily useful right now for me because I've got pretty decent stuff, but um, at times it will be. And because I'm doing chaos mode, I mean, the length of which I will be able to, you know, make it for this particular run, I don't know. Uh, I will say that the strongest, strongest mode I've had during chaos is like with the, the rogue uh, filled with a whole bunch of spawning uh, companions of sorts. And it just basically feel like I just destroyed the enemies so but as we get max health we can increase that and some stone toss but anyway but yeah, I'm just gonna go through and, and, and do as much as um, as much as it will let me uh, which means, I don't know, this video itself could be anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes long, just depending on how well I do. Uh, I do personally recommend Chaos Mode outside of the regular mode. Simply because it seems like it's the mode that less people are playing, so you have a little bit better chance of getting on the leaderboard. And also because you're more likely to be able to have um, cooler skills and better weapons. And what you unlock in Chaos Mode will also carry over into uh, the main mode. So that is also, you know, a reason to do it. it makes it very useful. Graphically, eh, you know, I, I, I like it. Like, I, I feel we've got pretty... Pretty nicely designed enemies. There's a pretty decent amount of variety. Uh, most of the changes of the enemies is purely cosmetic, which is perfectly normal for a game like this. The levels themselves, uh, they range from, you know, feeling very claustrophobic or very small to, you know, to being a little bit bigger. <laughs> this one, as an example, feels, you know, like a decent amount of size. Like, I, I'm not struggling for space. And uh, the weapon attacks that you get, or the skills, those I think are also pretty good. I really like the ability to, you know, build up your dash. Uh, and, and I really, really like the skill tree that we are working with because I feel like it gives you a lot of, in a variety and strategy on how you're going to play. Uh, and it feels different than most of these games where you level up every single time uh, which is just a bunch of random stuff and, and never anything really that uh, overall exciting I would say um, so I think it does a really good job of adding this kind of additional experience to you know what what you would normally expect where it's just all right I killed a bunch of things I leveled up I now have a new weapon or a new skill or, or, or whatever you know, but I only did it for one um, per level up. This, depending on how many 
of these light shards you've got, you've received or collected. That will determine how many level ups you get, and I really like it. I, I definitely am impressed with the level up ability here. And I, I think it's something that a lot of people will like because it's definitely something that's not the traditional stuff that you see with games like this, and it's just it's just nice to see a change. Yeah, I want to get the baby phoenix. Uh, so I'm going to kind of branch towards that. That is, I guess that's the only thing I. I'm not a huge fan of this particular skill tree uh, is that, you know, some of these things don't unlock until you, you know, purchase something that feels like it might be a little bit um, off and unrelated. Um, and so you don't necessarily know what, you, what you're what you going to get. So it's a little bit harder to kind of plan ahead. But we also get these different types of shards which we can use to um, do some other things. Uh, so as an example, um, let me see if there's anything I could do here that would make sense. Nah. Let's see anything. So we have this, which um, allows us to uh, reforge the connection of a skill. So let me just find something that potentially could be worth it. I don't really want to use any of these. But what we could do is, uh, for as an example, I'm going to use this one next. And I would like it to be something else. So I'm going to get a new dodge there. Uh, I could also come here and do it here. See what else it's going to be. And I really like that ability to kind of change these to, you know, something else. So the shards are super useful. And the shards are what you get when you kill an elite enemy. So even though you want to get as many of the, you know, the little light pieces as possible, it does make sense to just say, no, you know, I'm going to just ignore as much as possible so that I can spawn an elite enemy and potentially get some good shards. All in all, like the game gives you a lot of options to play exactly how you want, which I think is really cool. Uh, each w There are a total of 20 waves that you have to survive in order to get to the boss. Uh, the bosses are just large enemies, there's not really anything about them that makes them overly interesting. Whether or not I get to a boss in this one, I don't know, but we will certainly see. I personally was a little disappointed with the boss fights, uh, just because you still have, you know, your your giant hordes of enemies you have to fight, and depending on the boss, I mean, it can just be really kind of annoying to try to do what you need to do in, you know, fighting them and killing them. Because you're also having to kill, you know, hordes of enemies that are just really upset that you exist. The funny thing is this does make me think of an interesting, well, it's not really an interesting question, it's a ludicrous question. I saw a question about, like, um, who would win in a fight? Um... A trillion Spartans or you know the entire United States military uh, I mean that's kind of a, a crazy question because obviously um, that would just be nuts because you're talking about like two people per like square inch of, of land no I don't, I don't actually know but that a trillion is a lot and I feel like that's just a number that people are just not really sure exactly how much it's anyway the point of what i'm trying to say is um in games like this you're always faced with this like insurmountable odds there's so so many enemies that it's kind of nuts it's like if there's like where where are you that you're fighting a near endless supply of enemies um and are there other people like you it's almost like diablo where you know they, they you know did some hand washing and you're this you know, special powered person of sorts, not even just entirely human. And it's kind of just nuts to me because it's like, there's like, how exactly are you expecting people to, you know, kill thousands and thousands of enemies? Um, and if there's more people like that, let's just say every 
20 minutes, a person can kill a thousand monsters. Uh, you know, before they die. And we'll just suggest they die. Like, maybe they, they only kill a thousand enemies and then they die a thousand monsters. Like, you would think after a couple of weeks or something, I mean... You gotta imagine that they've killed all the monsters. I don't really get it. I mean... I'd like to think if one uh, very talented person is able to take out a thousand enemies, then a normal person like me could at least take out twelve. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like I could take at least twelve. In other non-related game news, I'd like to say that I, I'm having some, like, coffee I bought from uh, Aldi that is... It was like one of those weird sample packs. Um, it's not flavored. But it's got like Kenya, Sumatra, some other stuff. It's it's really good coffee. I'm I'm actually really surprised. I'm very thrilled with the fact that I'm having good coffee uh, for the morning because I've, I've been drinking like some other stuff, like other coffee that's just not very good. Uh, the coffee apparently has done nothing for my reaction time, but. Oh well. One of the modes I didn't go into in this is there's also an endless mode uh, that looks really cool. Um, and considering most of the levels honestly feel relatively the same with minor graphical differences, uh, it might be worth it to just play endless mode if you really want to. Just switch on over to chaos mode, do endless, and just see how long you can go. Um, because, you know, I, I feel like the game would work really well in that aspect. Um, I don't know. I will say, like, of the, the, the hundreds of games I've played like this so far in life, I think this is one of the best ones. I, I, I've been really surprised with how good it is. Um, I definitely, if I could make any change to it, is I would add more musical variety. Because I think we only have that one musical track. And it's not that the musical track is bad. It's just... It's not great. And it's like the only one, and it just feels really short. Like I said, if I could change something, that's what I would. That's what I would do. I would just add a little bit of musical variety, um, just so I could listen to, you know, um, you know, something else. I'd probably change the color scheme of the enemies a little bit at times, or maybe the backgrounds. Because sometimes it can be kind of difficult to differentiate um, enemies and the background. Uh, it can get absolutely insane to try to um, figure everything out if you happen to have all the skills that give you a lot of spawns. Because it just, you have so much on the screen at once, it becomes just crazy. So this is something I don't want to do. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's a boomerang, right? So when you see something that says not stackable, that will almost certainly mean you are going to have your, um, your weapon is essentially going to change to that type of attack. And I personally stay away from those whenever possible. Uh, just because I find it to be very limiting and I don't like it. Um, they don't like to get stuck with those very less than amazing attacks at times. Sometimes it's totally worth it, but I, I personally stay away from them whenever possible uh, because I find that they are not really ideal by any means. Um, 
stackable always seems to be the way to go. And while there's not really any visual indicator, you do have like a very, very limited minute, uh, moment of invincibility when you do your dash. Uh, so I do think it's important to try to upgrade your dash as far as like one of the more important skill trees. Not necessarily to do the, like the dash thing that I just upgraded where I get like the special attack. Like that, that, that in itself isn't too important. But being able to dash multiple times is like a really big game changer. And it respawns by, you know, or regenerates by killing enemies. And it's just, it's good times. Uh, let's see. More health. We get the stone toss. And then increase our attack. Stats are important. I wish they were more like um, predominant. Like I wish they showed a bit more, um, because the way that they are, like you're not gonna see it until you look at it. You want to take it. You know, attack speed is something that's kind of easy to get blindsided on because as you play and you unlock a lot of different attacks, some of the things that you're going to unlock are actually gonna make your attack speed a lot slower. Which, depending on your attacks, is either a really big deal or, you know, not really a big deal at all. So you just have to kind of make sure you're paying attention to that. The game will give you a warning if it feels your attack speed is very, very slow. Uh, but there's also achievements you can get for not having very many different attack styles. So there is a uh, reason to not, you know, you know build like a, a, a robust attack set you know at least once personally feel like I've been hosed a little bit um, I need more of these increased aura effects um, I'm actually kind of surprised I've gotten so few of them And given the nature, given the nature of how the uh, skill tree works, and oh man, I don't want to just happen there. It's got like a whole bunch of hits at once. Anyway, given the nature of the way the skill tree works, and the way that you know the uh, game itself works, because there's only 20 waves. After you finish the 20 waves, uh, it's over. Outside of using endless mode, I cannot imagine ever, you know, using, uh, you know, more than a certain percentage of the skill tree. And I, I would say an average run, I probably am only getting to about, you know, maybe, maybe a third and a half. So, like, maybe a fourth sounds better. I just really feel like I'm I'm barely scratching the surface. I'm trying to be a little bit um, smart here, because like I want. I only got two more waves, uh, and I, I think I'll probably give myself a little bit. There's no point in adding more health at this point because um, you only get one heart without some very specific skills, I should point out. Um, there are some skills you can get that will increase the amount of hearts that are going to drop, but for the most part, you can expect to have one heart every, every wave. Uh, and because I only have two waves, uh, there's no point in putting any other points towards health because I'm not going to be able to get enough health for it to matter. Um, at most, I will be able to have five hearts, 
which in theory is plenty to, and then it's enough to kill the final boss, but I mean, we'll see, like, it's definitely one of those games where if you screw up, like, towards the end, uh, you just might tend to just continue to screw up, and then the next thing you know, you're dead. That's why a lot of people don't go to Waffle House anymore. I'm just joking. Waffle House is delicious. It reminds me I have waffles in the freezer. Sweet. Um, where was I going to get the thing? There we go. I'm going to go this way anyway, but I'm just hoping to get something a little bit better. And this is the game in a nutshell. Like, I mean, I'm, we're almost, uh, we're, I've almost finished it. Uh, well, this particular wave, and then we'll fight the boss. Some of it again. Uh, fight the boss, and then, uh, you know, that'll be it. I'll wrap up the video. I definitely appreciate you watching. I, I hope that you looked at this and said, hey, you know what? This is actually pretty good. And I, um, I like this in you. Then follow the link in the description over to the Steam store page. You wish listed buy it if you want um but you know your money do what you want i definitely recommend it like I, I i i don't think it's necessarily one of those games you have to wait for a sale but i mean everybody has it at their own price point and i don't like telling people to spend any specific amount of money only whatever they're comfortable with uh so yeah we'll go there And a last level where we get a boss. Now, what is different about this in comparison to, you know, very similar titles is just because you've killed the boss doesn't mean it ends. Uh, you still have to survive the wave, uh, you know, the entire time. Which is going to be something that you're either going to be like, oh, that's, that's cool and acceptable and I don't mind it. Or it's going to be something that you're going to say is... Well, that's kind of kind of annoying, and I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I don't think there's a right answer there. I'm more of the the kind where I I well shit I just walked into the freaking bullet. Uh, I I personally am the kind of person who thinks that it would be better if you know the, all the enemies died. Well, anyway, I died, uh, but because I I made it you know um, so far. Uh, I can go back here and I can check and see is there anything I unlocked and it looks like I've got a couple of new weapons and stuff like that uh, But again because I do chaos mode none of this matters, but if you are playing specifically to uh, Unlock characters you would come here and look at this and say all right. Well, what do, what do I do? All right, well, I have to get to a certain stage and unlock things or I have to You know do specific things with different weapons and stuff. So it's all Very straightforward. It puts it's put together really nice Overall, like, like I said, I think this is like one of the better or survival or mobile tower defense simulators where you're the tower. It's one of the better in the genre. I really enjoyed it and um, definitely recommend it.